Okay, we're back for another video. This one's a little later tonight. Um, I am going to talk about two different species of rat snake. They are actually not the species of rat snake that I posted a picture of earlier. Um, the two that we're going to talk about are semi arboreal, and one is from the US, and one is an Asian species. Um, the picture I posted earlier, I really hope that people read the post and didn't just scroll through. The, it wasn't meant to be a clickbait kind of picture. Um, that baby yellow rat snake decided to bite my wrist this morning. Um, the, and that loud noise in the background is the iguana falling off of his perch. Teresa tried to cover him with a curtain and left one tiny corner open to where he could see us. So he was literally hanging off watching us and then just fell. Um, so that's probably going to continue to be in the background. Um, that little rat snake this morning, he's a baby, he's new to us, um, he is a male yellow rat snake which is native to Florida to go with a female that we currently have. Um, he was a little bit snappy, latched onto my wrist so I wanted to show you guys a picture of it. Those of you that don't know, Teresa and I are co-hosting the Reptile Room Confessions podcast and we just recorded our second episode last night. We were talking about beginners and good pets and bad pets and some different choices people make in the hobby when they're new to keeping reptiles and one of the things that we talked about was keeping baby animals baby snakes in specific how sometimes they're snappy and different species are known for that and different kind of things um, and how new keepers can react to it so when it happened to me this morning I hurried up and took a picture because I had intended to just pose him for a picture later on but I thought about that episode and wanted to talk to you guys about it. So I hope you guys read the post and got something out of it other than kind of the clickbait picture of seeing a snake bite somebody. Um, the One of the comments I saw before we came here to do the video was actually open wide and was trying to make a joke. Um, that picture turned out to actually be a really good teaching point for the elasticity of snake jaws because his jaw opened almost 180 degrees because he's so small that in order to actually get his top and bottom jaw on me, his mouth was almost completely flat. So if you actually do look at the picture in depth for more than just the surprise factor of a snake bite, there is stuff that you can learn even from silly things like that. I thought it was cool. Um, he's a baby, they do that. I actually am the kind of person who scolds their animals and talks to them like they're little kids. So I was literally telling him no the whole time he was doing it. They can't hear me and it's pointless that I do that, but I just do. So he just kept right on chewing on me and then let go and I put him back. Um, no harm, no foul. It's just kind of the nature of keeping snakes. So we're going to mess around with a U.S. native rat snake and then we'll get out one of our really cool Asian ones. This is probably one of the favorite snakes in our collection, both with us and with people that go to our shows and handle our animals in public. This is a Baird's rat snake. Her name is Birdie. She's an adult female, and I love their colors. If you actually look, I hope the phone focuses for you guys. Um, if you actually look at the scales, the scales themselves are ringed in orange, and I don't know if I can get her to bend enough. Probably not. Her actual flesh in between the scales is colored. So as she moves and bends and twists and does all the things a snake does, whoop, sticks her face at you, um, you get that yellow along the neck, you get the orange along her body. That's her actual flesh. They are an amazingly colored snake. So they are native to the American Southwest, specifically the Big Bend area of Texas, and also across the border into Northern Mexico. And they are like most snakes in that part of the country, in that the specific localities of where they're from can look vastly different. So in the hobby, you will sometimes see Mexican Baird's rat snakes, and you will also see locality Baird's rat snakes from the different parts of Texas, and they can look significantly different. 
Um, one of the people that I follow online, his name is Andy Maddox. He has a Baird's Rat Snake that he routinely posts. It's um, a locality he found in Texas, and it looks much different compared to ours. And I really like following different people that keep Baird's so I can see the different parts, as, especially people that live in that natural area. They get to find a lot of really cool stuff. Um, field herping for U.S. natives is kind of a niche thing nowadays. It's always been kind of a niche thing, but it died off for a little while, and it seems like it's starting to pick back up, so people are starting to find a lot of really cool stuff. Um, these are semi-arboreal, which means they are able to climb, but don't always spend all their time in the trees. Actually, a lot of people that seem to find them find them in rock cuts and climbing rock faces, which kind of makes sense when we're gonna talk about the next rat snake, because a lot of rat snakes that climb are not necessarily tree climbers. There are a lot of cave dwelling rat snakes. Uh, cave complexes in Southeast Asia seem to be a really common occurrence. Uh, Vietnam is famous for it and they have a lot of different kinds of rat snakes that seem to transition from trees to caves really well. And then in our country, it seems that we have a lot of rat snakes that transition from that scrubby, short, stumpy tree type of habitat into the rock faces and rock piles. And they use that same musculature, same structure. They're still very adept climbers. They're just doing different things with it. Um, so no matter where you're at in the world, it seems like rat snakes have been able to do that tree to rock transition really well. I thought that was pretty cool. So you can see her belly is pretty neat because it kind of does the orange up the sides and it gets very shiny focused on the window Boop. and I slipped because you touched my hand birdie the colors on these things are ridiculous she is absolutely one of the most popular snakes here just because people sit and look at her while they're holding her or while we're holding her and try to find all the different colors they're really cool Super active right now. <laughs> mm -hmm. She was basking on top of her height when I got her out, so she's fairly warmed up. So, box that the Baird's rat snake was in, right? This is the exact same style of box in the same size, all right? This is a beauty snake. He came in through the rescue. Um, judging by his tail stripe and what I can see from the different patterns, I think he's a Taiwan beauty, um, but I don't know the specific subspecies. I know, buddy. And he was actually full on asleep. So remember, same box, different snake, right? So this is a beauty snake. And beauty snakes are native to Southeast Asia. And they have a number of different subspecies. There's Chinese, there's Taiwan, there's Vietnamese blue beauties. I got you. Here, is that better? There you go. So, because he's semi arboreal, he's not quite as adept of a climber. So, he was kind of winging that tail around looking for something to grab a hold of. And then, when I put him down on my thigh, he was able to grab a hold by my knee. But he did kind of need that guidance. He can't just pull on the tree like some other fully arboreal snakes. So nice big eye stripe. Now that it's down below the table, you guys can't see, but he also has a very large tail stripe. And then similar to the Baird's rat, if you get close to his scales, they are actually ringed in white instead of orange. So each of his tan and gold scales actually has white all along the edges. So as he turns, that's the color you can see. I know you're trying to pull on the box. But 
Oh. Significantly larger, right? But still a rat snake, still almost all the same body structures, very similar uh, attitude, very similar musculature and how they live their life. They are almost all rainforest species, but they do have a couple of different cave dwellers, specifically the Ridley's cave dweller. That's a pretty famous one in the hobby. It's fairly routinely kept. Um, and Chinese beauty snakes actually have a bunch of different morphs. So we talked about morphs a little bit when we were talking about the pythons. And there are albinos and a couple of different kinds and different colors. Um, one of the really good people who's working with beauty snakes in a couple of different works is the Zerkles, Z-E-R-K-L-E. -E. They do a lot of really cool stuff. I follow them online. Um, I'm a big fan of the different things that they do. You got dust on your face. And you can see way bigger than the Baird's rat snake, but really he's doing the same thing. The Baird's rat snake body, when he wrapped up, or she, sorry, was able to fit on my hand and a little bit hang down my wrist. And then when he does it, it's just looped over my shoulder and hanging onto my hand. Um, they both need a little bit more support because they are semi-arboreal. They're not quite as fully arboreal as some snakes like the Amazon tree boa and different things that we've shown you. So when I had the boa constrictor out and stood with him and he was just wrapped around me like a backpack and I could talk with my hands and not really have to support him. That's a fully arboreal snake. He's a little bit more muscular. He's a little bit stronger. His tail is able to help him hold on better because he spends a significant amount of his time in trees. These guys obviously don't, especially the ones that are used to climbing in caves. That gives you those rest periods because as you're moving up the rock face, it's actually still flat. So you're holding on and digging into those little nooks and crannies, you get to a flat spot and then you can hang out. A lot of times um, cave dwelling animals are waiting for bats to exit and enter caves. So they'll either hang on tree branches close to the entrance or they'll sit in little flat spots. That's a, a really famous picture lots of people see for cave dwelling rat snakes and carpet pythons. Are you trying to get back in the box? But you can see he's kind of doing the same thing to me, using that big flat rock face that is my collarbone and shoulder and then just kind of hanging down seeing what's going on it's all the same structure it's just a larger snake and he's using me instead of using a cave face or a tree limb and this guy uh, along with birdie both came through friends of scales reptile rescue um, they're actually both kind of success stories a lot of times when things come into a rescue situation or an adoption situation, people think of them as being sick or maybe abused or neglected or some negative connotation. Um, these snakes, along with a few others that we have, came into the rescue through good circumstances. It was keepers that had kept them through to adulthood, had taken care of them wonderfully, and then had life situations changed where they simply weren't able to keep the animal any longer. So it wasn't anything negative on the keeper's part or on the animal's part. They were healthy. This guy is humongous. He obviously had a great life. He came in very well fed, very well adjusted. Birdie was the same way. Came in as an adult, great colors, super good personality, great eater. Um, it was obvious that they were well taken care of. It was just a life situation thing that caused them to be relinquished. So it ended up being a really positive spin to the rescue adoption thought process for reptiles. Um, that unfortunately isn't really the norm when you talk about rescue animals, but it does happen and it's really cool that we get to show people examples of that. So there's your plug, Erica, if you're watching. But they're really cool. I never really thought I would have an adult one. Um, this is the kind of species that you see at trade shows and stuff and you usually see babies and you don't ever really see the true monsters and you kind of read online or you see pictures in National Geographic and things and it's like, oh man, Asian rat snakes can get really huge. It'd be really cool to see one or have one or hold one. Um, and it just doesn't happen as often in the hobby, I think. Um, people 
grow up and get their own reptile collections and then they kind of taper it back a little bit and maybe get a smaller species or something that's a little more a little easier to take care of um but to have true giant ones is is pretty cool it's a really awesome thing to be able to hold and interact with and of course he has dust on his head because we're trying to feature him Okay, so that's the Monday video. I uh, hope you guys are doing good as we continue the shutdown, lockdown, and we will see you tomorrow. All right, bye.